Uh, welcome to our featured speaker series. Uh, this is a series that's been going on since last year where we feature some of the outstanding projects that have happened in our Affordable uh, Learning Georgia uh, Affordable Materials grants, uh, both in our transformation grants and in our mini grants, uh, otherwise now known as continuous improvement grants. Today, we have um, Dr. Shaina Zlange, Dr. Christine Whitlock, and Professor Nikki cannon uh from Georgia Southern University. They are going to be presenting on an implementation of low-cost learning materials in organic chemistry. So I am going to turn this over to them. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff, and I, I will start um and just briefly mention, we'll talk more about the roles each of us play, but briefly mention um, Shanaz and I, I'm Christine. Um, we both teach in, on the Statesboro campus of Georgia Southern University. We teach in primarily in the organic chemistry sequence. And Nikki is a research services librarian on our campus or at our university also. All right, um, next slide, please. And so we will start out talking a little bit about the background of our project um, and then about what we proposed in our grant proposal, um, what we ended up as our product, how we what we ended up um, forming as our transformation, um, some of the results that came from the assessment and then future plans on our campus. OK, background. So I'm not sure how familiar you are with Georgia Southern University. Um, you can see it's the largest regional university in Southeast Georgia. We actually consolidated with Armstrong Atlantic University in 2018. So we now have more than 26,000 students on three different campuses. So we have 20,000 on the state, which is where is housed and, and where we are housed. We have about 6,000 students on the Armstrong campus in Savannah and a few hundred students on the Liberty campus in Hinesville, Georgia. You can see that Georgia Southern ranks number two in affordable colleges in Georgia and number five nationally in producing African-American graduates in physical sciences. Our department, Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, also spreads out over the three campuses. Um, combined, we have over 400 majors in chemistry and biochemistry. Um, I counted yesterday, and it looks like we have 45 permanent faculty members and four permanent staff members. And we are pretty proud that we regularly rank nationally in the top 25 producers of certified degrees. These are degrees certified by the American Chemical Society in the BS degrees in chemistry. Um, we have several times, numerous times, been ranked in the top 10. Um, and that's competing with all universities across the country. So we're pretty proud. We generate a lot of the certified degrees. All right, I think Nikki's going to share a little bit about how this whole project began. Thank you, Christine. So this group really became involved with all of this um, a few semesters ago when the library in collaboration with our Center for Teaching and Excellence offered a faculty learning community on open educational resources and what those were all about and how they contributed to student success. And our end product of this six week faculty learning community was to just strongly, strongly encourage our faculty to decide on one course that they possibly wanted to tweak or overhaul with open educational resources or library subscription materials that could bring the cost for their students down and to apply for one of the Affordable Learning Georgia transformation grants. So myself and Debbie Walker from CTE led this group through the six week process. And that included a lot of brainstorming about which class they thought would be the best to tackle first and why, what they liked about the current materials they were using, what they didn't like, um, their concept of how many students maybe purchased the textbooks or didn't purchase the textbooks, how their students interacted with those course materials, what inclusive learning actually meant to them and how they felt that these new materials could increase that or help that. Um, they had 
the experienced champions and myself and Debbie on the campus to kind of walk them through and help. And also there were others on the campus, other faculty members who had already received these grants and done this work. So we tried to pull some of those examples in as well in order to give them an idea of what had been done, what was possible to be done. And then we talked specifically about the Affordable Learning Georgia program and what they supported and how they could get involved with that. So basically they went through assessing their educational needs and the needs of their students, um, identifying resources. We spent some time actually searching through and seeing what was already available and out there and talking about, of course, the Creative Commons licenses and what those allowed faculty to do. And the fact that they didn't necessarily have to start from scratch, that there was already quite a bit of material out there and that simply purely adopting was okay for this or adapting as necessary. Um, so most of our groups decided on more of a kind of adoption with some tweaking as necessary format, because for many faculty, of course, the idea of starting from scratch is a little bit overwhelming, not to mention the time that that often would take to make that happen. And so by the end of this six week program, almost everyone on our faculty learning community had at least began a strong, strong draft of an ALG proposal that they hope to submit in one of the very near rounds. And now okay. it's back to Christine. Yes, yes. And I hope you can hear me. All right. Um, so, so Shanaz and Nikki and I were sort of were the lead members on this, but here are some other um, team members that helped us with this. So you'll see faculty members. So we have listed here the remaining faculty members on our campus that teach in the organic se sequence. So we wanted buy in from everybody. We didn't want to make a, a big change or overhaul without their input and their their agreement. Um, so those are the faculty members, Corel Aiken, John DeCesar, Rafael Corino, Hans Shans, and Abid Sheikh, representing four continents, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and so those are um, the faculty members that helped. We have another library liaison who really helped with our final product with the, um, the lib guide that we formed, Jeffrey Mortimer, Mortimer. He's a discovery services librarian on our campus. And then we did not originally have this planned, but we had money left over in the budget from Fringe. And I honestly still don't understand how they take out Fringe and don't take out Fringe and that kind of thing. Um, but there was some money left from salaries. So we were able to transfer that and hire two undergraduate students at the end to help us with um, assessment. So we actually had, uh, and I'll talk more about this later, um, surveys, pre and post surveys, and they were hard copy surveys where students circled one through five on a Likert scale. And so Isaac and Alex helped us um, convert that all to electronic data and all that. So they went through and hand input all of the, um, the results or the, the scores that the students gave on the survey. So that was a nice, a nice change that we made. OK, <clears throat> so uh, we will discuss in the next few slides that what we have proposed in our um, in our proposal for the ALG grant. Uh, next slide, please. So our study objectives for this proposal was to adopt a no cost open end resource material, which is already available, um, virtually available. And the main main thing was how can we dramatically lower the cost of student exp ex expense? <clears throat> we then wanted to align the uh, OER material uh, that is open end resource material with the and the supplementary material with the course objective, which wa whatever we are offering currently um, on our campuses and to all uh, to add a little bit uh, more to this particular proposal. We did uh, add uh, develop supplemental materials which will provide additional re resources uh, which will uh, particularly tailor to our department needs. Uh, we seven faculty members at the state board campus work very um, close together in the in a committee fashion, so we wanted to see what supplemental material will help each of us and then finally we wanted to assess the material to measure uh, whatever we have given to the students or to the faculty members to test um, is it 
effective in student satisfaction, student performance, or even with the faculty satisfaction. So that was our goals or the study objectives with this proposed plan. So in the introduction, I just would like to add a few points over here. Uh, the, the area we are located in or when you meet most of the students, you will realize that the overburdening cost of textbook is so high that uh, for most of the time the students are unable to purchase the textbook. If you try to align to get the textbook along with the homework system, that is also very pretty high, even if they plan to get the ebook. Uh, so what happens mainly that the student do not end up purchasing the textbook because they cannot simply afford it. And so without access to the textbooks, uh, the following thing pattern happens that they come to the class unprepared. They do not read the material. They don't know where to get extra problems uh, to study from. And this series of factors lead to uh, failures, you know, so it is uh, having an option of low cost or no cost is always good because it will guarantee the student success and it will, the student will have access to the critical learning materials needed for their success. So the proposed project, uh, what what we had asked for from from this particular grant was to utilize the available OER material and replace the costly textbook which we had it on our campus uh, for both the lecture portion of Organic Chemistry one and two, um, and then we wanted to provide also the supplementary material in terms of uh, uh, PowerPoint slides or homework slides and uh, tailored to our department needs, like what was expected, what what would be helpful to our uh, department people uh, and to um, develop a material in such a way that it aligns with the student learning outcomes and also align with the how what we are teaching in the lab and is the content being parallelly taught in uh, involved in the textbook as well. So uh, the biggest uh, transformation statement which uh, we planned, we planned and we actually executed uh, in the proposal. What we wrote about is to reduce the cost of the material from dollar two hundred. Uh, $200 to uh, $30, which was for the homework, because uh, most of the faculty members were still comfortable with the uh, online homework system, um, and th that took a lot of back and forth with the um, online homework. Uh, 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 the people who who provide that services uh, to bring that to dollar thirty dollars for uh, per semester, and we wanted to take that advantage by uh, seeing like if we have any free online textbooks available on the OER website, which includes OpenStax, Merlot, and all the stuff. We will talk about it. And the second uh, transformation statement which we had is like customize the supplementary materials uh, by the lead members, and then we share all these materials which we have si synthesized during this proposal. Uh, and share it with our other team members and uh, we divided it and uh, we will talk about that as well and ask them to edit it and edit that edited version helped us a lot because now we have all these people working towards the same goal and so it kind of helped us there as well and after the alignment of the content material whatever we have uh, made or synthesized it uh, reinforced the lecture material with the lab material as well because uh, most of the time our are the instructor which is to, uh, teaching the class. They also end up teaching the lab as well, so it was very necessary to keep this alignment all throughout the through, uh, throughout the things which we are providing, whether it is textbook or whether it's the lab manual or whether it is um, uh, supplementary materials. OK, so where it is really going to impact? It is going to impact on various level uh, starting from student to the university level. So student impact will be really money because if you have free textbook available and supplementary available supplementary material available, uh, the students will definitely take advantage of it and the opportunity will lead to achieve higher student learning gains. Um, we are going to talk about that and then uh, at the department and college level, the guarantee that everybody has the material, it will positively impact the learning culture of our department as well as college. For the university wise, if you think if you bring this OER material, we are creating an inclusive 
environment for the students saying that you all can afford this. You all can have this material from day one and provided it's an in inexpensive uh, access to the course content from day one. Uh, it will give them the motivation to study and increase the student success and where we can see this the effect it will be seen only in their retention or graduation rate uh, throughout the uh, through the longitudinal study or um, people who are trying to get the, gather the data so uh, that was our main goal like creating an inclusive and uh, inclusive environment to all the students OK, so um, Arshinaz, are you going to talk about the roles? Uh, I, I, I can I can go ahead. Uh, okay. So 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 the roles which we have, we said like uh, one of the best thing we did and uh, that is what we have learned like since we are uh, so department of uh, we have 45 faculty members, but seven faculty members are generally responsible for organic chemistry course content. We involved all of them and so that helped towards our sustainability plan because we are all in one group and we were targeting one goal. So there was nobody like we will not uh, agree to this or that we were talking as a committee and we were sharing our information. So even though me and Christine took the lead, but it was shared with all the uh, faculty members in our department who teach OCHEM uh, courses. So our main goal, me and Christine's goal, were to responsible for identifying what are the materials available, aligning with our learning goals, whatever we have, uh, preparing or bringing all this material together on the same platform, uh, adapting, and then assessing at the end of the semester like what we are doing and how we are doing. So I took charge of OCHEM 1 and Christine took charge of OCHEM 2. Um, we also we obviously have to report to everybody who is involved. We contact the team members and we kept uh, the library liaisons in the loop since the beginning, uh, even in the proposal they were there. So we, we kept on telling them this is what we are doing and how we are doing it. And um, at the end, we wanted to create the assessment instrument. So this was our major goals because we were the team leaders. The faculty members involved, Dr. Quirino and Dr. Sheikh, they were mainly responsible for OCHEM 1, and that is how we divided our chapters. They were responsible for reviewing, editing, and revising the OCHEM 1 material. We provided them all the material. We said that this is what we are thinking, and they gave their valuable feedback, and we made the changes accordingly. Uh, Dr. Aiken and Dr. Shans, did the similar job but for organic chemistry too and uh, we kind of divided it where there are like 22 chapters in which like everybody got like five six chapters each to edit and uh, give give us uh, the feedback uh, on the library side um, since beginning, even when they had con con started the FLC, uh, um, Nikki has been great, great help along with uh, uh, Deborah Walker from CTE. And uh, since we got this idea, we got involved into this. And uh, Jeffrey Mortimer, at the end, when we really, really wanted to put all this material in a presentable manner on LibGuides, which we will tell you later on, uh, that uh, they assisted in training, identifying how to do it. They gave us. Uh, uh, sessions of uh, literally how to put a PDF file online in a different way because we are so used to our learning management system on Folio that we were very comfortable. Me, Christine and all the faculty members were comfortable. But if you want to bring this out, so in the presentable way, so how the links can uh, die if you just try to copy material from uh, there, so how to put it in a coding fashion. So they gave us a training and it it, it is very I we think it looks awesome, but but uh, it is it is very uh, good out there. And so as as Christine mentioned before, uh, Isaac Graves, uh, Miss, Mr. Isaac Graves and Mr. Alex Whitlock, these are the students we were not having originally in our proposal, but later on we got uh, uh, stipends in such a way which we cannot spend within on anything. So uh, we were but able to hire undergrad students and they did help with the data collection and dissemination of our project, which really helped because they can attend the conferences with us. Christine? Sure, I'll speak on the timeline, which is pretty straightforward. So we were awarded our grant in, in early spring of 2019. 
And so in April, we spent time reviewing. Shanaz and I spent a lot of time together. Our offices are actually neighboring, so that was convenient. But we spent a lot of time um, reviewing the resources available and narrowing down what we wanted to use. In May, we looked and tried to align everything with our um, course objectives that we have for the Organic 1 and Organic 2. Um, courses, the learning outcomes, we wanted to convert, look at everything. Uh, we did a review of our online homework system. As Shanez mentioned, that's something that we sort of, we all do together. We have an online homework system for the students. Um, and so we sort of reviewed that and made sure we, we wanted to do something that was aligned with the terminology and the breakdown of the, of the new textbook that we would be generating. Um, we looked at supplemental materials in June, which ended up becoming pretty much um, the, the textbook available on Folio. Um, Shanaz has prepared some lightboard videos. Um, we have some um, classwork material for the students, but primarily it was the outcome of the textbook that we, we generated. So in July, we had we formed a sandbox in which all of the organic faculty members have access and we put the links the original links to everything we put all of the new uh, and so as Shanaz mentioned we had other faculty members in our in our um, organic division on our campus help us divide the work and so they showed us what 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 should go in there what shouldn't go in there and Shanaz and I made made the changes, made the cuts, and we built the sandbox. So now um, anybody who's teaching it would have access to, the, to that, anybody teaching organic, and they can add this, whatever part of it, all of it or whatever, to their own folio platform whenever they're teaching. All right, and so the fall we implemented it. We, um, in every organic course on our campus, on the Statesboro campus, we added, we implemented the new, um, completely free online text. If you'll if you'll notice the $30 was for the online homework system and Shanaz did a really good job negotiating a lower price for that. Um, we looked at the we got feedback through pre surveys and post surveys and made a few tweaks over the break before spring of 2020. Those were primarily um, hyperlinks that didn't work or, or things that you know little glitches like that. Um, and then we continued on with the free textbook in spring of 2020. Um, we'll talk a little bit because that was a little unusual. We switched completely on online after spring break because of COVID. So we didn't quite expect that. And we'll see that that was actually helpful to have the online textbook. Um, we prepared our um, final report that summer. And now we're continuing to work in the fall. We still have this this academic year. We still have the free textbook. Um, I think it's working well and we've generated libguides so that people who are not using the folio platform also have access. Okay. So uh, for our sustainability plan, <clears throat> we guaranteed that the material is up to date and current standards currently. We, we consistently kept on updating because we were so happy with our folio and sandbox material unless like we really gave it a thought about lip guides. Um, we, we made that changes and we put it on lip guide, so it is available. Somebody did ask that question. It is available and I'll show you in a minute. And uh, the leads like me and Christine are responsible for uploading the new material, so uh, we are consistently getting like small internal grants for update of the material of uh, um, how to put more homework problem questions or how to put um, some lecture videos on there. So, so the supplementary material is consistently been updated. Uh, we we, uh, we we have decided that we will maintain and upgrade the online platform entirely throughout because if it has to be sustainable, it has to be current and uh, it has to be accessible to all the students and faculty members and everybody actually. Um, so LibGuide is our best choice and um, it looks uh, like we have that available. So now what, what we are doing, like how we are doing currently, we are disseminating our product to on various local and regional platforms, national platforms. We have already presented ourselves in social 
meeting and we are presented in a um, ACS meeting American Chemical Society. Now we got this invitation and we plan to uh, present ourselves in USG teaching and learning uh, meeting to show the progress where where we are and what the data we have. And um, if we have a D like a, if we have collected a decent amount of data in the current years and as Christine mentioned uh, spring 2020 was like a big um, problem there because we had to stop in between. But uh, if we can gather like for two, three years, a good amount of data, we will think about publishing this uh, platform, whatever we have designed. Uh, so now we will show you the links which we were talking about. So uh, Nikki, if you uh, so these were the mainly two books we recommended in the proposal we will use and we did use this uh, material uh, in a huge way. Uh, the one the first book um, if Nikki, if you can uh, uh, click it and see if the link opens at all, but they're all hyperlink when this will be shared, uh, you will be able to see this. So this is mainly on biological emphasis. Uh, Dr. Soderberg was kind enough to literally write a letter to us saying that uh, you know what uh, his his kid is in the college and then if you can just go ahead and utilize our material wherever possible so uh, so we were very happy that not only we had a uh, um, access um, uh, the cc access but it is a cc by access but also like you know getting an original letter from the author so that helped and then I emailed Dr. Rausch for the virtual textbook. It is already there. It is all there. The textbook is there. But uh, Dr. Rausch has been retired for uh, years. And then he said, please use whatever you want. The only thing with this is beautiful. Uh, how to say the we have a lot of content, but nobody is updating this website. So if we were able to take this information and align it well with what we want, uh, this 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 came with a lot of uh, content what we needed. We did not have a straightforward textbook like OpenStax textbook when we started. Now I can see one, but when we started, we did not have a straightforward textbook. So these two things which we utilized a lot and uh, to create our generate our materials. And so this uh, this is where we would like to show that uh, this is our textbook, um, uh, which um, Don has done. Don and uh, Jeffrey has done an excellent job, like of putting this together along with us. And we we kind of they help literally uh, to us how to build the first chapter. And once we knew what we were doing, we just kept on adding the material because our folio sandbox was very well prepared. So if you see, this is how our textbook looks like. Uh, we have. Um, Acknowledge whoever uh, has helped us till now and then in the first chapter you'll see these are the sections available and then if you go to each and every section possible you will be able to link there and you can see what you're looking at. So the biological emphasis book has a PDF. So uh, uh, Mr. Mortimer gave us the training how PDF links can be saved uh, for a longer period of time, not only just copy pasting. And so um, so we have like around 20, uh, 20 chapters there and uh, we plan to put on and every every chapter has kind of a different kind of additional problems added to it, uh, which came with the virtual textbook. So that was kind of neat because of the practice problems which came with the textbook. So some some things are uh, already there and some things are uh, like, um, yeah, so, like this. Like you can see, like it is already active. Uh, their concern is oh, good because their concern is like since that website can go anytime, so we having this uh, aligned to our content system will really help. So that is our textbook over there. Recently, we came to know that we are on that. Um, uh, the USG system has kept all our uh, proposal or our results and our syllabus and the textbook all in one particular um, place and that is that ALG link over there. Then Merlot went ahead and pulled our textbook and put it in their database. So we are right now in Merlot as well. Uh, so uh, and there is a rating system for Merlot which we recently came to know. So we are, I think so we are doing good there as well. OK, so as Shanaz mentioned, this has now moved to a LibGuide and you'll notice that they're still working on that library guide. Um, this group had been using all of their material in Folio up to that point and teaching through Folio. Um, it was honestly through ALG 
who reminded them that through the grant agreement, they had to make this open. And of course, our learning management system is not fully open to anyone outside of the system that they came to us and said, we need a new idea. We already had another group of chemists who had placed a textbook. Um, it was an adapted version of an open stacks book on a LibGuide. So Shanaz and some of her groups had seen this and liked the way it looked. So some of the pros of using the LibGuide as a platform is that it's not closed, okay? It's available to anyone with the link unlike Folio. It's also discoverable in like Google searches and things of that nature. Um, it's a familiar product to most of our campuses. Our students have been using them in several of their courses, especially with research components. Our faculty were also familiar with them. We had used a LibGuide in the faculty learning community that we had mentioned before to disseminate the information. So it is a familiar format. It's an easy format. Easy format to navigate and easy format to update and keep current. It also has accessibility standards built in. The SpringShare platform has ensured to add the major accessibility standards so you don't have to worry about formatting things in such a way. If you just follow what is already built into the LibGuide, you'll have proper heading settings and things of that nature, alt tags, all of those things are available. It's amenable. It's able to accommodate a variety of formats. You can have links in there, documents in there, embed videos, PDFs, um, other interactive components can be added in there. And plus they had a great deal of support to make sure that all of the HTML worked out properly and the other formattings. Anytime something didn't go as needed, they simply had to contact either myself or Jeffrey Mortimer and we could get in on that back end and support them and clean things up and make sure things are working properly. And I will add that as we move forward a little bit, the push is going to be to get more of them on the LibGuide instead of the folio aspect and to show them that there are also ways to add content to that LibGuide that their students won't actually see. So they can actually move their sandbox even over from folio to that LibGuide and utilize that effectively. So if we look at some of the results, this is just the typical analytics that are available to be pulled from our library guides. And you'll notice I've pulled it for just this semester starting January 1 and going through um, April 14th, just the other day. So they've had over 3000 views of this, even though not all faculty members have switched over and are using this LibGuide version. So we expect those stats to go up as more and more of the faculty are pulling away from the actual folio files and using the LibGuide. And it should be noted that the LibGuide can be placed inside folio, so they don't have to abandon folio. Their students will still be utilizing folio just like they're used to in the faculty as well, but the guide can be linked in folio so it's just one seamless action as far as the group is concerned um, if we look at the monthly views of this by the breakdown of pages you'll notice there's an interesting decline as the semester goes forward again at this moment we're unsure how accurate these stats are simply because not all of those faculty members are utilizing the libguide they're still pulling from those original folio files and now I believe it's Christine that's going to go over some of their additional assessments with you. Sure, so our plan was, as mentioned, we generated some pre and post surveys to talk about student satisfaction, what they felt about, what they anticipated they would like about it, and what they actually did like or did not like. Um, we talked about faculty satisfaction. We did post surveys um, the two semesters. We looked at exam grades, final grades, um, we looked at retention and I'll talk a little more about that. And then as Nikki just mentioned, the, the usage. So, so we've been looking at the analytics to see how much the students are actually accessing the textbook. All right, so our, our general results, the positive aspects that we got from the surveys that we found out, they really do like the digital format. Um, they like it being free and easily accessible. 
Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of them are using their phones when they have a free minute or whatever, and just quickly looking rather than we anticipated them to be using um, a larger computer to, to work, um, but they're, they're quickly accessing, but they do like the accessibility. And they really like the hyperlinks. So if they wanted to look at one specific thing, one specific reaction, one specific part of the chapter, they can just quickly um, jet to that rather than having to flip through and try to find what they're looking for. Um, on the negative aspect, the students mentioned that they still are more familiar, or some of them, not all of them, but are more familiar with hard copy textbooks. They just feel comfortable studying with a textbook open next to them and writing. They like highlighting textbooks, that kind of thing. Um, we noticed that some of them were not even aware. If a student missed the first day when we introduced it and they weren't really checking their homework, their um, online platform or folio, they didn't even know that there was a textbook. So they saw that there was no book listed at the bookstore and so they assumed there was no book. So we, we've got to do a better job advertising that. On the neutral, uh, oh, I'm sorry, if you could go back real quickly. On the neutral, um, results we know the student performance really didn't change it sort of stayed the same now this was over um over one one year so we're still kind of collecting performance data now so that's that's a little bit early probably to judge um, but we did also in the neutral um, result something that we didn't anticipate is at our university we switched completely online right after spring break due to the COVID in spring of 20. And it was really easy. The students were home and they could access the book. They might, might have left it back in their room when they went home or something like that, but they had access wherever they were. Um, and so that was sort of, I guess, a positive, but we did not expect that um, as well. All right, I just pulled some selected student comments. Um, you'll see one, I enjoyed how we didn't have to pay for the textbook and it was easy to find more detailed information if I was confused on something. So they're sort of using the textbook more targetedly. Um, the second comment, I always found it helpful since it was both cheaper to use and easy to follow than the regular textbook. And then here we go, we had, I think we had two of these comments. I did not know there was a textbook. So that's something we need to work on. I think they saw there was no book at the bookstore listed and they assumed there was no textbook and, I, and I'm assuming these students didn't really check folio. All right, so I've pulled some of the questions from our post survey. Um, these are what Alex and Isaac helped us pull together this data. So good value, as you can imagine, that's pretty high. Good value for the price I paid, which they paid zero dollars. So 79% said positive and 6% were negative. Um, accessing the course materials when I need them, that was very high. So that was one of the benefit, the highest benefits we saw was that they were able to access the course materials easily. Um, they also liked um, being able to read and understand the material it wasn't quite as high, but it's still overall positive. That was something we were a little concerned is were they were, with the digital format, were they able to understand it? I will say that I did not add here our lowest positive, which was 61 percent, was interesting and engaging. So that was it was still overall positive, but I think the lowest factor, the lowest um, the, the lowest factor that they related was that the textbook wasn't quite interesting as engaging as they would like. All right, and then finally, is it useful? Is it a useful study aid? And so overall 72% said that, yes, it was a useful study aid that was positive. Finally, um, it was difficult to get some faculty comments because um, Shanaz and I are two of them. We didn't want to participate in the faculty surveys also, and Shanaz is actually married to one of the other faculty members, so we kind of had to be careful about collecting comments, but these were the, these were two comments we received that one of the benefits is that the students and faculty can focus more on the learning than acquiring the textbook. And another one is um, we don't have to wait through for financial aid to come through. Students immediately have the textbook at that very beginning. You set a good precedent, set a good start there where they're accessing the textbook right from day one. So um, we will go to our um, future plans here. Uh, I, I like the ones we started this. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Nikki, that it was like I believe it was in 2019. Uh, we started 2018 something. We started this attending the meeting and understanding this. And uh, since then, 
uh, our department, like uh, chemistry department at Statesboro campus, and I have to say, and there are faculty members from Armstrong campus attending this. Um, uh, Armstrong already had one grant uh, from ALG uh, in the chemistry department, and since the, uh, our first grant uh, between uh, our organic chemistry group, we have been able to get multiple grants. Uh, Dr. Osborne, Dr. Narendra Purupu and her whole team got it along with us in round 14, and then Christine got her recently uh, on drug design course, and I got it for uh, remote mentoring of undergraduate research student. That is one of the unusual gra grants we have got. Uh, and th so what I uh, want to say that we have expanded our open end resources in the chemistry and biochemistry department and uh, people are acknowledging it and uh, um, allowing it this to welcome this idea and uh, making the teaching more inclusive. And so that is a good lead. And so what we are doing in the department as a whole, we are kind of literally training, you know, like you have this textbook and you are using this and you are paying for so much. If you need help, the we are literally guiding them to go to the library or we are sharing. Uh, we don't even have to share the content because our proposals are online. Everybody's proposal is online and they get the help there and they come to us and they talk to us. And so recently the, uh, Dr. Osborne and um, one more faculty member from uh, um, health, uh, health sciences, they got the award and uh, our libraries has been really, really helpful. The CT people have been really helpful. And so uh, somebody did ask, even on Merlo, if you try to go and check Georgia Southern University, you will have our textbook listed. And the USG has a very good database already listing of all the things we have worked on. So I think so we are on the right track now and we are um, literally um, asking other people to come in and join this group. So in uh, conclusion. <clears throat> so conclusion, um, so we did actually convert all sections of organic chemistry one and two on the Statesboro campus to the free open source textbook that's been done. Um, so now every single student taking organic chemistry one and two should have access to our textbook through the learning management system and through our library's LibGuides. Um, it looks like the students do appreciate the low cost, the no cost and the format. Um, we have yet to see a difference in performance by the students, but I do think it was sort of an asterisk semester, asterisk year with the COVID hitting. Um, so we'll continue to look to see if we do see any any improvement in performance and retention. And none of the work will be successful unless you get that support system. You know, we have heard about this OER grant for so long and uh, we have been close to CT and then I kept on insisting and asking, hey, can we have some kind of uh, guided system to how to apply to these awards? And uh, I, I was very glad that Nikki and uh, and obviously th there are champions on our uh, campus, but when you don't know, you feel overwhelmed. So we have got a lot of help uh, from various sources. So first, I would like to acknowledge the uh, university system of jo Georgia um, textbook transformation grant who has given us this opportunity to come together and work and uh, providing a stipend so we can work focused during the summer term that this is our time. We really need to focus and do our job well. Uh, obviously, our department without them, without they on board, anything we do is not going to work. So our chairs, our uh, other faculty members, the peers, the people working in the organic chemistry division and um, uh, our staff members who really, really helped us to understand the paperwork involved in this. Uh, the College of Science and Mathematics because they have to provide us the letter uh, to even apply because they are on board. And so the libraries, I can't thank you, thank them enough because not only uh, Nikki is a great help, but uh, we know her so well that we can just pick up the call, uh, the phone and call. But uh, Jeffrey Mortimer, at the end, the way uh, he arranged and aligned and tried to work with the training sessions and give us information. Uh, so the LibGuide looks good because of his training. And the uh, Center for Teaching Excellence, uh, Deborah Walker, Lauren and almost everybody involved in that uh, CTE section is uh, so helpful that uh, we don't have to ask twice. The RSSP is to understand that how we are working with this paperwork because when you get a grant, it's one thing on working on stuff, but to uh, understand the paperwork requires a lot of skills. So these people while applying or explaining us the fringe benefits and how to uh, hire an undergrad student, so they did help. So uh, we all as a group are really thankful for all the uh, support we have got.
And Chinez, did you want to mention also the um, the support that uh, the other Armstrong campus has received? Uh, yes, yes, I did mention it in the um, uh, the expansion one. They have got this uh, grant already in the chemistry section, which they had implemented it. And uh, so in the coming years, we will see like how we can uh, uh, collaborate and align and bring it to all the three campuses. Yeah. So here is our con contact information on all our email ID. This has been recorded, so you can get this. And if even if you search us on GSU website, you'll get it. And uh, here is our quote, which um, uh, me and uh, Nikki, we, uh, yesterday night we were searching for something nice for open end resources. And so however good the information it is, if we do not find it, it's not of any value. And so we thank you all. So we are open for questions. Uh, there is a question, uh, Christine, future directions, any interesting in adapting the survey? Um, oh, OK, any uh, what is it? future directions? Any interest in adapting the materials for Chem 1152 survey of chemistry too? That's an excellent question, Justin, and I think Dr. Osborne is in this meeting. Uh, she recently got for 1152. We uh, Tanisha, you want to talk about it? If you're there, yes. Hello. Um, and so I, I did recently receive the grant to adapt material for 1152. And right now um, the goal is to utilize a no cost textbook through Merlot and then create adaptive um, or supplemental material for the course. And so that supplemental material would help to align the content from that text along with the materials that would target or be more specific to the allied health students because this course is typically utilized by pre-nursing majors and so that is my goal for the chemistry 1152 at the moment do we have any other question Do you, do you see? OK. I think we may be good. Uh, Tanisha, you, you got the message of like they will hear you soon. Sure, that is this the, presentation. That's I would good. hope so. So it was just funded, so I am in the process of beginning work on that. And I was funded through the spring 2021 through spring 2022 round. And so the plan right now is to begin implementation of these materials in the fall. So hopefully I'll be in the shoes of Dr. Langay, Dr. Whitlock and <laughs> Professor Rick next semester or next year. Our chemistry group at Georgia Southern has been rock stars in this. <laughs> thank you, just thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, only only thing is I feel like we have to work a little bit uh, more um, in terms of assessment because the still we are we still are in that COVID environment and I don't think so. We have still got real data. And so once we uh, come across uh, normalcy, whatever it is now, and uh, are, we are consistently making the links more uh, accessible and uh, it is available and one one person did ask uh, um, Nikki about that they are not able to find the lib guide immediately because it is not listed on the front page so uh, but if you try to find that on uh, Merlo website or the links which we have shared it will open up immediately uh, but uh, but thank you for that comment we'll try to make it on the main page of the lib guides it's not on the main page because it hasn't been fully publicly published at this okay. moment because okay. you're still working on it. Yes, yes. Uh, once that's complete, it will be fully public published. At this moment, you do have to have the link to access it. Yes. 
And also like uh, if, if we want to collect the data, uh, we feel like a more a detailed uh, assessment uh, survey would help uh, if we plan to publish in a year or two. So if we have a data for a year or two, then it will be easy to publish. And I would like to mention to those of you still here, um, Christine mentioned several times that they haven't seen an increase in performance. But you also haven't seen a decrease in performance. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So, so I want to point out that that's an important thing because um, it basically follows along with the multiple levels of research that have shown that OER does not negatively affect your students and their performance. <laughs> Uh, uh, Dr. Williams uh, mentions that uh, not seeing an increase in performance is typical for many OERs. So, yeah. Uh, Dr. Williams has also got uh, the grant um, recently for uh, 1310, uh, um, which is our engineering course. And uh, Dr. Polizzi has asked, what is the homework system that you pair with OCHEM OK, uh, our homework system, which we got is Wiley Plus. We really had to talk them and talk to them and uh, ask for like that dollar thirty rate. They agreed, but that textbook is over in July now, and now the price has been increased and Wiley Plus doesn't agree with the price which we asked for. So we have to change our homework system in the coming year. I tried to get Sangeet to give a, a just a homework system for biochem, uh, but to no avail. Uh, Dr. Polis, we we are trying right now mastering chemistry. We we are uh, chatting with them and text uh, like trying to get like a good rate. Let, let's see how that works out. But Wiley is not budging. They are seventy dollars per semester now for organic chemistry. Yes, Dr. Williams. They are they are uh, set, uh, trying to get the things out by homework system. Yeah, it is unfortunately not solving some of the initial issues that we saw with um, textbook affordability to begin with, because recent surveys have shown that students are opting out of that access code if possible um, as well for the same reason, because they cannot afford it, even though many of them feel it may negatively impact their performance because obviously they can't participate in that. If it's at a point where they simply feel they cannot afford it, um, they're making some of the same decisions they did with just purely text materials. If they have that option, they are um, opting out at fairly decent percentages, unfortunately. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, uh, Christine, there is a question. Have you looked at sapling learning? Um, we looked at it. We used to use sapling learning a while ago, but we haven't looked at it recently. I think it has changed, hasn't it? It's changed ownership um, and that kind of thing. But I think we will soon, next month probably as a, as a group, we'll look at all of the possibilities and sort of review all of them. Dr. Majdi, do you know the rate of sapling learning right now? Homework thing? We will probably look at sapling learning. We yeah. have two, three uh, things in mind. Macmillan recently contacted and sapling we can try because sapling is used in our gen camps. Um, and so we can try that one. So what are what are we using in gen camp mastering or sapling? I think 
mastery. Mastery, okay. I have used it before, okay. We'll look at the rates. Sapling is used in 12, oh. Sapling is used in 12.11 and 12.12. Okay, Macmillan owns now. Oh, you're smart. Any other question? This has been very informative. 1310 is also using sapling homework along with OER. Yeah, uh, thank you for looking for. Yes, and if you need any any um, help or suggestion or not link or something, we have put our email IDs out there. So 